time. I'm gonna record there for a second. Backup audio. We ain't got no music. I didn't. <laughs> we didn't bring back the music, so we're just gonna jump right into it. This is. Do you want to sing can, a song, MG? You could sing a song. No, no, I don't want to sing a song. No fucking <laughs> songs here. Mm. What is up, I everybody? Could new, I could sing you the new Lincoln Park. No, okay, no. we're gonna start the pod. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome to the I Don't Give a Football podcast. Um, I don't know how to intro. This is, this, I'm so used to music and it's easier to flow into it uh, with the music, but we'll just, uh, we'll just jump right into it. So um, if the button wants to go, there you are. I'm Jonathan Risk. That's MG Geek. That's MG Geek. I got to figure out which way I'm pointing now, too. We, we are the I Don't Give a Football podcast, formerly the XFL podcast, formerly the UFL podcast that never really came back. Also of Matt and Men. We're, we're, we're doing this. It's been a minute. We're back. It's week two. We're delayed. It's crazy. This came up in two days. MG, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm trying to make an adjustment here. Oh, there's my adjustment. Okay. Shed some light on the subject. Makes more, it easier. More just I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little rusty at this, so I'm trying to figure everything out. I haven't had to turn a camera on in a while. I'm so, very yeah. rusty as well. I'm, so here's what happened. So the XFL podcast, after one season, the XFL combined with the, what was it, the USFL you, to create the UFL. And MG and I got busy. We ended up not doing it. And then we said, you know what? We're going to talk all football. I'm a Raiders fan. He's a Lions fan. We both have similar fan bases. So let's fucking do this. But we are also going to talk about all things NFL. So here's how the show is going to work. We're going to start with around the league stuff, MG. Then depending on who has the better week, MG will go first or I will go first with our Lions Raiders stuff. Then we'll, we'll wrap it up with a Monday Night Football preview. Um, MG might go on a rant and then we'll get the fuck up out of here. Cause I don't give a fuck and I don't give a football podcast, baby. MG, how are you doing today yeah. after a, um, a loss, sir? For the oh, Detroit Lions? It was bad. I do want to know, like we might throw in a few college football things here and there, like Rutgers, Michigan week. I could see us talking about that a little bit, but yeah, it's all, it's all mostly going to be pro, but I could see something like that coming up. Hey. I, I am a little sad uh, how how my um, my my Lions ended the, the game. There was definitely mis- mistakes. We'll go into it, but all in all, I mean, big picture, I'm not I'm not that worried. But it was a little disappointing. Well, on the screen right now, and I don't think you can see it, but uh, MG, if you want to wave to everybody, because right up on the screen right now is our QR code where you could join us on Discord. Make sure you like and subscribe as well everywhere you find your podcast and right here on YouTube. MG, we are going to get into it. Um, Let's start off with segment number one on these beautifully tailored notes that you put together. Um, You want to catch up on the offseason. So talk to me. What happened in your offseason? Did you have a good one? Uh, well, I, me, you know, uh, you know, I, I had 20 massages. No, I, no, no, I'm not gonna be weird. Wait, no weird. <laughs> I was, I was acting like I was a player and I'm not a player. <laughs> MG. Realize that came out. Yeah. <laughs> MG, MG, we can't, MG. <laughs> All right. Here we, we go. It. Check. Bring it back in. Bring it back in. Bring it back in. <laughs> All right, MG, let <laughs> rephrase that question, please. <laughs> can, can we just can we just talk about the week that was? All right, because I already have to tell you something, MG. Yes, I miss Derek Carr as a quarterback. Okay, I I, I hate to say it. I really miss Derek Carr as a quarterback, and I'm about to share something with you. I'm about to also put it up on the screen for everybody. Um. Let's see if it goes right here. There you go. Derek Carr scored a touchdown and did a Michael ja- Jackson he he dance. I don't know if you saw this. this. This was incredible. I've never seen this from the Christian quarterback himself. So th- this was this was pretty incredible. I don't know if you watched this game, but it was a it was miraculous to see. I had to watch it on Red Zone. 
And so the first half of your game, they didn't even show because no one was scoring touchdowns. <laughs> well, fair enough. But receiver, I'm- I was going to get Jonathan's thoughts on the, the show receiver because I ha- I loved seven of the eight episodes. The eighth one, not so much. But uh, we were talking uh, throughout the throughout the summer when that was going on, and he's like, "Have you watched it yet? Have you watched it? I watched it. I he goes, episode four is the best." And episode four was the best because it well, showed. I said it was going to uh, be the Devon- best for you. Mm-hmm. I yeah. didn't really have Devon any Adam. enjoyable moments. Of it. I, well, you know what though? He listen, listen. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll give you a big compliment, or your guy a big compliment. I didn't. I thought he, he. First of all, he played for the Packers for years. I thought he was a big ass. Thought, but that that changed my perspective on that guy. You thought Devontae you Adams was works? an asshole. Yeah, probably because it was it more had to do with who was throwing him the ball. But when I, when I think back, I think on Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback. He's a great quarterback, but he's 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 the diva, not not his receiver. I, I enjoy Aaron Rodgers as a human. You know, I'm I'm probably mm-hmm. one of the more hot takes on that, but I actually don't mind um, Aaron Rodgers. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't mean you don't you don't. Uh, you don't mind people flying to Brazil and having overnight eminence or whatever he did for, nah, for nah. like two seasons in a row. <laughs> nah, let him let him go into the darkness. Let him do his drugs. Let him go to Egypt. Let him. I have no problem. I'm able to separate. You know, I don't, I don't know him personally. He's never done anything wrong to me. So why should I hate him? I mean, maybe you as a Lions fan, I, I guess you. I could see where you would get yeah. it. Like, like you probably oh, yeah. oh, don't. Yeah. Well. You you probably do hate Patrick Mahomes as much as I do, but you know if they didn't if for for we're not hey you know what it's gonna be it's a, it's a twofold actually we'll get to it and when we go start going through some of the stuff but it's twofold with him a lot of it's the people around him are are the issue with him, that I have with him um the other thing I wanted to really rap about uh, was this kickoff rule what do you think so far? Because I have thoughts. I think the penalty should be should have been stricter, stricter. Um, I think it should have came out to okay. thirty five or the forty, not just the thirty. Because we are seeing a lot of I, just touchbacks. Yeah, I would say the forty at least, and I would not be opposed to the fifty. Make these people have to run it. Make it make a big penalty if you. The fifty's um, crazy. I would. Them. I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to see it more than really forty. I would maybe push it to forty five mm. if we're talking. But forty and if probably, you, probably. The and if good you let it go, me. and if you can catch it in bounds and you let it go, then that's then it starts at the ten. I will say, I thought I, I thought we would see a lot more uh, uh, special teams I touchdowns already. You and I, because you and I covered the XFL, and this was one of our biggest notes that entire that entire season we did is how this was cool, and they had the right rules in place there. But now they're just like you know what? It's only five yards. Let's just let's just uh, accept the ball at the thirty. You know. Yeah, so I, I they would. Yeah, I didn't. I don't. I don't mind it that much. Like I said, it definitely brings more intrigue, and I'm definitely watching the kickoffs more. And that's, I think, what they what they want at the end of the day from me as a consumer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's. I thought I thought it would be a little bit more exciting. Um, as for our fantasy league too, that we do with twenty people right now, where special teams does make a difference. Um, but let yes, let let's get into more about the week that was week two around the NFL. MG, um, where do you want to start? Uh, I see let's right here. This. Yep, go ahead. You want to start hey. with uh, Tua Tonga-Vailoa. Yeah, we got to we got to talk about this and and I I wanted to bring this up and I don't know where you stand on this but it's getting long in the tooth. That's 4 in 2 years of concussions. And that last one, I didn't see it live. I went back and watched it and went, "Oh, that looked nasty." Um so I don't know what you think, but I'm thinking he's going to have I imagine tomorrow they'll put him on IR. Um and he'll be there for 4 weeks at least. But I honestly, if I'm, if I'm them, if I'm the league, I go, okay, we're bringing in a third party, uh, um, uh, 
neurologist to look him over, and that guy will make the decision if we can come back. And but when. they did, but they did and, that, and he and he came back. Uh, he came back the last time, and here's what I'm saying: mm-hmm. we could still see him play in the next game because Miami has a long. Uh, a, l- a long bye week because they had uh, the Thursday game and they're not playing until I think Sunday night. So they have even more time where he could get cleared. Um, I don't so, think he so should. You're, yeah, I don't think he should. Uh, I'm on, I think he should I, at least eight weeks. I'm on the camp that like he, he should really take a look at himself in the mirror, yes. like look at the situation in the mirror. But, you know, who am I like? I I have no say in it. Was either of us? Yeah, yeah it's and we're not do- we're not doctors. Yeah, it's we're not no. doctors. But I mean, yeah, my I career think- my career in football ended because of too many concussions. I had a concussion yeah. in college that quite literally, mm-hmm. and it wasn't even on the football field. I was DJing at a party um, at the campus <laughs> I went to. The strobe lights, and then I was dehydrated. I ended up passing out and hitting my head uh, on a table on the way down, and I lost like six oh, months of memory. Like, uh, oh, wow. and it was, it was right okay, before, it was right before finals. I had to start writing everything on my hands. My short-term memory was toast. I couldn't remember shit from any of my semesters. And that was kind of it for my football career. So I understand, um, his look way scarier than me passing out at a, in a nightclub and hitting my head on the mm-hmm. table, uh, on the DJ booth. But you know, still it's, it's definitely, definitely a scary thing to have four concussions of that nature in the past two years. Um, mm-hmm. And the, the irony is the guy that hit him, uh, that hit him was DeMar Hamlin, who almost died on the field. So there was a lot of weirdness going on with that, but I don't know. I, that, that aside, I hope the guy takes the time he needs and they don't rush him back. And I know there's going to be pressure to rush him back, but they should wait. Because yeah. he did fine last year. Mm. I was looking at um people that they could trade for because I could see this turning into like a Josh Dobbs situation that was last mm-hmm. year where he just kept getting bounced around. And mm-hmm. I don't know, like... They're going to go get a quarterback. They're probably going to have to. Yeah, but who do you get? I That I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No. Who do you get? Like... I'm trying to think where the do you call Who's up the, the Giants for Drew Locke? Sitting on the bench. Oh, the Giant. Uh, the Drew Locke's gonna be starting. I don't know if uh, Daniel Jones is gonna <laughs> Flacco. Uh, yeah, maybe Flacco. There's one. Do you call up the Broncos really and try to get deal. Stidham? You know, there's uh, there's a couple things. Yeah, I mean they're gonna need a short term solution and maybe even a long term one. I don't know. We'll have to see, but that definitely changes that division. That uh, the the NFC East for sure. That's the AFC East, and the AFC East is AFC just East. the I AFC apologize. East is a wild shot in general. I really don't know out of all of them who's going, especially to with come the Patriots. Like, hello, they're winning games and things. Yeah, it's it's week two, <laughs> MG. We could settle down. Speaking of people <laughs> needing to settle down, you wrote here in the notes, Mahomes does it again. I had to make sure to add the uh, the end to that no, sentence. The refs did. The, the refs did. <laughs> you're, and, not, you're not wrong, but MG, they go hand in hand, it seems like. Here's <laughs> the question. Here's the question. And, I, and obviously okay. I have a bias. Right. Yes, a big one. But yeah, that's we're, fair. we're able to admit the bias, but we're also able to admit everything that we see with our own two eyes. Some people for, some people, some people for. If you maybe contacts and glasses, maybe six, maybe some people are doubling up. But have we seen a game from the Chiefs in the last calendar year where at the end of the game we weren't talking about? A penalty not being called or being called that always seemed mm-hmm. to help out the Chiefs in general. Like, oh, it's it's true. I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. I get it. Um, but remind me again of the play because I might have missed the one. I, I I'll remember it once you say for it. for the Chiefs. Well, there was a um, I mean, there was a pass interference. Was it a pass interference technically by the book? Yes, but would you call oh, okay. it in that you, moment? Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. know. There they, was also um, this play where Pat, 
Patrick Mahomes did his Patrick Mahomes thing, scramble through it out, and there's a screen grab of literally mm-hmm. uh, Juwan Jennings having whoever the defensive end was in a choke, rear naked choke, like mm-hmm. like full on holding it. Like it's just it's it's ridiculous the shit that goes their way and only seems to go their way. Like, it's almost like the refs are watching him and not the play. It's like, oh, Patrick, or tickling his his nether region uh, instead of uh, keeping their eyes downfield. That's what it feels like sometimes. Yeah. But I will say this about this guy. Um, he's Michael Jordan, right? No. Is there any – I mean, he, he as far as that, his rule in that – him in the league, as far as being able to be clutch like that, even I know, I know you're going to say the refs, but you got to give it to him to a point, right? I do respect that. No, you don't. Okay, fair. You can't. I'm, I can't give it to him until he has a. Di- I said. I said this week one. I said this after week one in our in the in the in the DMs group chat. The the chief. What the Chiefs need is a convincing victory with no hoop in it. That's what they need. No one, no one say I'm. I'm now here saying the Chiefs aren't a great team. The, like the a frustrating thing is the Chiefs' offense is fun to watch. I love Isaiah Pacheco. I'm a Rutgers guy. Mm-hmm. Like that's my man's. I'm. I'm here for it. Like I have. I have some of the Chiefs dudes on my fantasy team. It's annoying when they do it to my team. I. Re- I'll, I only get enjoyment when they're playing NFC teams because it does little diddly do for me personally. But. At the end of the day, we can't sit here. You can't sit here as a Lions fan. I can't sit here as a Raiders fan. A Vikings fan can't say it. A Dolphins fan can't say it. A fucking New England Patriots fan can't say it. There has not been a game that Chiefs have won that hasn't been decided or helped out by by an officiating call. Not one. Tell me one. Both Super Bowls, it happened. Week one, it happened. Week two, it happened. Like it, it, it keeps happening, MG. And at some point, like the only game, the last game the Chiefs played where they didn't have calls go their way was on Christmas. And what happened on Christmas? Um, I believe they lost, right? They lost to the goddamn Las Vegas Raiders. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Give me a convincing win with no with no officiating going going in your favor. Now, now here here's one. If every call goes against them and they still win, I mean that's a good victory for the Chiefs. But but all every time it it has there's there's something with the referees every single time. And I I actually thought that today there wasn't going to be any. I was watching the game with the Bengals and I said, oh damn, you know what? Come to think about it, I'm I haven't like thought about the refs once this game, and that <laughs> that was like something where I was like, oh shit, they might they might get one. At the end of the game, at fourth, at, what was it, third and sixteen? It was something ridiculous, mm-hmm, yeah. and then a fucking oh God, the roughing call or whatever the call was that fucking <laughs> got him a new set of downs. Like, are you fucking kidding me? And I knew it. That's the thing. And actually, I said this during your game, during the Ravens game. I goes, I goes, and I said it about Lamar Jackson. I goes, this is the kind of quarterback that you don't want to give thirty seconds to. And Mahomes is number one on that list, regardless of the refs. You know, if there's 30 seconds left, there's a good chance that he's going to do what he needs to do to get in scoring position. And, you know, you got you. And even if you do say the refs uh, help, but it, that goes without saying, right? Yeah. So I know it sucks. It, it sucks. I just I, I, Cincinnati had him and they squirmed out. Um, so and then you already talked a little bit about the Saints thing. You got any more on that on the Saints? No, uh, man, I missed their car, man. Okay. As a, as a yeah, reason. Now, now that you're seeing, now that I'm seeing what you're dealing with over there, um, Gardner Mitchell is a, a, a um, basically a super backup to me. He's not a starting QB. You know, we'll I, get, I don't know. We'll get into the whole Gardner Minshew thing when we get to the to the Raiders okay, segment. The but but yeah, the whole. I mean, and Mitch didn't even have a bad game. But like somewhere in the back of your head, you think that with Derek Carr 
still being at the helm for the Raiders, it relieves so much stress as a Raiders fan because you don't have the constant rumors that Devontae Adams is going to get traded because those are really only there because of receivers, which is probably the biggest reason I didn't like receivers, which I, I enjoyed the shitting on Josh McDaniels. But there's this mm. weird thing that because... That actually fun. <laughs> yeah, but I there's, this like weird, there's this weird thing because Antonio Pierce was the interim coach that people associate those same feelings the team had last season at the beginning that people saw on receiver as things that are still happening in the locker room now. <coughs> Excuse me. When we really did see a full a full change when AP took over as the head coach for the for the Raiders. So like if Derek Carr was there, I don't think we would have the Devontae Adams trade talk as much as we do. Um, I think receivers would have been 10 times as better for a Raiders fan on Netflix. Um, <laughs> and I think that the Raiders are 2-0 and right now with Derek Carr at quarterback over Gardner Minshew. Um, with that being I can, said, I can, there's, I still, that. there's still a lot, of, a lot of football to play. Um, and I don't know. I, Derek Carr didn't have a great season last year, so I don't think the Raiders would have been much better last year if Derek Carr was still the quarterback. But I think with this team, um, well, with, the, the, with, your biggest issue was Josh McDaniel. I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah, that yeah. wrecked your season last year. Yeah, mm. fuck Josh McDaniels. Um, yeah. But somebody who had a big game today uh, was Marvin Harrison Jr. Four receptions, 130 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, fucked me last week on my uh, one of my opening day parlays because yeah. I had him as an anytime <laughs> touchdown, thinking he would. Of course, why would Mar? Why would, would he, he have two receptions? He had yeah. two receptions or something like that, or For like 30 he, yards. Like 30 like yards, one. yeah. But that's why I put is. this up. This was interesting. So, were you yeah. impressed by the young man from the Ohio State MG? Yeah, yeah, he's pro now. I care less about his affiliation to school. Um, and and you know what. It, that's that's that could be scary if uh if uh if the midget I got it what's his what's the quarterback Kyler name? Murray like, thank you Kyler Murray um if he if he can get a rhythm with this guy th this could be scary yeah. this guy could be the best in the league um the best receiver going forward maybe not in the next couple of years but down the road for sure. I definitely think he could be a top receiver. Um, I will say this: Arizona does not scare me. Like, no, Arizona is not one of those teams that I'm worried about right now. I'll tell you the team that I'm probably most impressed with. Um, and the game's still on right now. I'll record it. And this is just after two Houston? weeks, but like my flyer team, the Houston Texans, like CJ Stroud. Yeah. Another reason oh, yeah. I hate Josh McDaniels. He should be the quarterback of the fucking Las Vegas Raiders. But CJ Stroud is a fucking baller. Um, I mean, they're down, they're up nine right now, third and 17. This man just throws a screen pass to, I think, Tank Dell, who doesn't get the first down. You know, live watch along shit. But I'm really impressed with the Houston Texans. And I really enjoy uh, really their whole dynamic as a team. And I think their new un uniforms are fucking sick. I, 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 they're my sleeper to get to the Super Bowl. Like that one team that looks like they're turning around, actually kind of like my Lions in a lot of ways, are built very similarly. And the, as far as the progressions they're taking as time goes on, um, yeah. Uh, so definitely, definitely like what they're doing there at Houston. I will tell you, there's who, another team. Go ahead. I was going to tell you a team that's not making a Super Bowl, and that's the fucking Carolina Panthers. They fucking stink. <laughs> <laughs> why 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 do the Carolina Panthers stick so goddamn bad, MG? I don't know. Um they're uh they might be the third best team in, in the Carolinas behind Clemson and uh uh South Carolina. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I'm like wow. I, yeah, I, I haven't been able to follow them. All I know is that every time I see them come up when I pick, I just automatically pick them to lose. <laughs> yeah, the Raiders The Raiders got them this upcoming week, our home opener at Allegiant Stadium. The, uh, so you got a bye week. Well, it's kind of a bye week. See, you, well, you, we can't treat it like that, but yeah. Yeah, we're gonna and, and what MG and I plan to do is on Thursdays or Fridays um, definitely probably 
Thursday night, Friday, it'll get released. We'll do our picks for the upcoming weekend. Tonight, we'll only do our picks for tomorrow's Monday night game. Well, it'll be today's Monday night game when you guys are listening to this. Um, but moving on from, I think the Panthers could be worse than your own 16 Lions. I do want to point that out. I did write that in the notes, yeah. but I do want to Go also ahead. point out um, <laughs> another thing. Will Levis, have we ever seen a, a player become a meme as quickly as Will Levis has? He, like, the week one, he has the the arms behind his head, uh, hand doing again, intercepted. This week, uh, Brian Callahan's literally going, what the fuck are you doing? And that's caught on camera to him trying mm-hmm. to, I guess, pitch the ball to somebody. I, I can't remember a single player that has become this meme. Um, I'm trying this to quickly. think. Gee, I don't know. I, it's a good. I'll have to think about it. Maybe I'll have an answer for you next week. I doubt it, but um, if I think of one, because I'm sure there's one that we're just like not thinking of. Well, you come back to me, but uh, let's get into what the people probably really care about. Given you're a Lions fan, I'm a Raiders fan. Let's talk about mm-hmm. our squads. So tell me, right. tell me about the Buccaneers at Lions game because I was busy watching the Raiders game. MG. Oh. I'm sorry. Well, you you actually turned out to be actually. I was able to watch the end of your game too, and I was I was highly I was kind of impressed. But we'll go into that in a minute. So the big the big Tampa Bay wins twenty to sixteen. My Lions looked flat, um, at times confused. The only guy that really stood out all day is Aiden Hutchinson. If no one thought this guy was going to be a stud uh, going forward. Because his tax his sack total has only been around ten per season, yeah, he got a he's at half that now because he got four and a half sacks, three in the first quarter. Um, I don't know why Tampa thought they could block him with just a tackle. Uh, he was just eating that guy up. Finally, they started moving people over there and and ch- having a tight end chip him, so it got a little easier for him. But he still wreck havoc and. You know, there was a there was a couple plays in here that it could have been different. The big play uh, for my line, the big one was the fifty yard to Jamison Williams. When this happens, I'm like, okay, okay, shut it down. We're gonna roll. I go get out the body bag. We're about to take him out, and then nothing. Then every drive after that just stalls. We get to the twenty yard line, and suddenly nothing gets through. Uh, I was a little frustrated with that. Um, o for sixteen in the red zone. For touchdowns, not what that's you want. Not good. Yeah, not what you want. No, no, no. Uh, so the 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 part that Dan Campbell talked about in the pregame or the postgame, there was this weird play. Tell me if you've ever seen this. I, did you see any highlights of this? Um, kinda... Probably not. But explain it to me. Okay, so the Lions are up. Um, I'm sorry. The Lions are driving down. We're behind, and we have like there's like a. 20 seconds left on the clock and golf gets us to the line and he it was third down i believe and he gets a short drive but he doesn't get enough for the first down he runs to the line to check the ball okay i don't think it was third down it was actually second down because we still had a a down left so he was going to check the ball or you know spike the ball and for whatever reason, at the same time, Dan Campbell starts running the field goal unit out on the on the field. <laughs> so we got flagged for 12 men, but actually it was like 17 men on the field. <laughs> I'm like, how does that happen? So then in the postgame, Dan Campbell took took uh because all they had all they would have had to do was spike it, Jake Bates come out, we kicked that another field goal. And instead of it being down by four, we're down by two or actually one. So and then and then at the end of the game, we would have just been able to kick a field goal and we would have been struggling to get down the field to score a touchdown. So just little things like that that really were frustrating. Have you have you heard anything like that? Because that I've never. No, that that sounds like. That just sounds like. 
I don't want to say someone that wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yes, but, but somebody <laughs> wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but it, Cause, but cause it just it just sounds like sounds like Campbell was just like, all right, he's gonna spike it, and in his head was like, all right, field goal kickers go. And then, like, they started <laughs> running on just because everyone was, like, on autopilot a little bit instead of being in the moment and started going oh, uh, on before everything actually happened. Golf, golf knew exactly what he had to do. His, they got up to the line. Yeah, no, I think I think everyone knew what they had to do. I just think, you know you know what it was? It was a perfect case of, of doing what you practice. And I guarantee yeah. you that Doran practice before he spikes the ball, the field goal team's already running out there. And because of oh. that tempo mm. that they're used to in practice. <laughs> so but I was in the military. For those that don't know, I was a cop in the military. There's this story that is told through training that these uh, two cops were found shot because they were picking up their, their casings while they were shooting. Because in training, to, so they wouldn't have to clean up their rounds afterwards and to get home quicker, while they were doing the training shooting, they would pick up their casings as they went along to training to make less work for them later on. Well, translate that to the real world. They were in an actual shootout. They went to do what they were doing in training, picking up their casings which you don't do in the real world and ended up uh, losing their lives. Don't know if that story is real. It was just always told to us in training, but that's what I do is that you so they lost their life. You practice. They yeah. did. So the 10 second runoff and the half was over. Yeah. But you practice when <laughs> you practice, how you play, you play, how you practice. Excuse me. I, I guarantee you, I can guarantee you as someone that was a long snapper throughout college for punts, I guarantee you, that's probably how they practice it, is they start running on the field before golf finishes his part. And that's where the timing came in, you know, and, and on that note, it, it showed how rusty they were on offense. Um, so I don't know about your Raiders or any other teams that you kind of followed or been Lions play no starters on, uh, in preseason. None. It was all just, uh, it was all just the, the reps and the walkthroughs and everything like that. So, um, that I think is still a problem. I think there's timing is still off and little, and it might, you might be right. That might be uh, added to that. Yeah. Um, the Raiders, the Raiders I did think, play, I think, yeah. In, in the first two games and the last games, it was mostly backups, but yeah, they definitely played the first two. Quite a few because, starters. Because we okay. had a quarterback competition. So you had the starting right. offense out there and the starting and if the starting offense out there, starting defense is going to be out there with them. I'm sure if next year we and don't have a quarterback did. competition, which we probably will be, um, that we'll do this yeah. all over again. But <laughs> yeah, so um, surprisingly, y'all lost. Yeah. And like I said, there was a lot of things. Um, I just want to let you know, breaking news. Chris Godwin just started another touchdown um, and he had... This guy went off. They couldn't, they just could not stop him. Seven receptions, 117 yards, one touchdown along a 41. It just seemed like he was always open. And Baker Mayfield um, just broke our backs with his uh, his scrambles. And that's how, and the only guy, there was at one point, I think it was almost in the, it might have been, it might have been the third quarter. I'd have to go look it up for sure. I should have pulled the stat, but uh, Chris Evans didn't even have a catch until like the third quarter. The only guy Mike that caught Evans? any passes was, yeah, Mike Evans, not Chris Evans. Jesus. Chris Evans uh, <laughs> is uh, Captain America. <laughs> That's totally different. Totally different. But yeah, um, uh, he he just went off. So he had all the receptions for the first, good first half and into the th third quarter. So, and then he got a couple toward going there, but uh, yeah, Lions are back to struggling against uh, mobile quarterbacks, and I'm a little scared. Um, I, I just, I just don't know. Jared Goff was two interceptions. Um, the first one was at the very first play of the game. Jamison Williams runs a, a slant as he's coming out of his route. As he's turning, he's clearly more than five yards. The guy checks him. And knocks him down, and Jared already had the ball off, and it were right into their uh, their safety's hands. And it's like, oh man! And they're like, that was it. I that was pi, and of course they said it wasn't. So I just think the ref might didn't see how far downfield he was. But yeah, um, I don't know. 
I I don't know. It's a little. It does suck. Um, I think we'll be fine. We play Arizona next week. Uh, in Arizona, so we'll see how that goes. Doesn't I know they go well if you're struggling today. with mobile quarterbacks to have to play Arizona. Yeah, I know that does. That's what's scaring me right now. Is is how how does that get better? But I will say this: um, we should be able to score pretty good on uh, Arizona's defense. But, um, remember the Rams. Uh, the Rams uh, got beat by them today, and it, a lot of it was the Rams had no offensive line. They had a lot of people out, so. Well, the Rams I'm haven't felt like they've had a team in like two years, right? Yeah. Well, this year they looked better. They looked Jerry or Jerry Goff. Uh, Matt Stafford looked awesome against us. He just, they just, they just fell a little short. You know. Yeah, they're and, another team that I'm not scared of. I tell you, there is. I'm not. I'm not scared of really anybody in the NFC West. Like it's gonna be. It's gonna be Seattle, San Fran. That's the way I look at that division. But um, okay. speaking of a team that didn't have trouble with a mobile quarterback today, that would be my Las Vegas Raiders, MG. Now, oh, let me my. tell you about this, this game. Right. I yep. loved I actually like this game. Well, I'm, gl- I'm glad oh, you enjoyed it. Because, the second half. Go ahead. Mm. <laughs> because, because I had a full-blown heart attack. By the way, like and subscribe <laughs> and join us on uh, Discord. But the first play of the game, we fucking fumble. Right, the rate the the, <laughs> the Ravens. Well, actually, let's back this up, MG. Let's take this all the way back to um, what's to yesterday, Saturday. So, what happened Saturday? I get a phone call from my baby brother. Right, I'm like, oh, what's up, baby brother? Talk to me. He's like, did you know that Dad got scammed for three hundred dollars? I said, what? How did this happen? Tell me more. He goes. Dad was trying to surprise us by getting us tickets because my parents only live an hour and a half outside Baltimore. So my dad was trying to surprise the family by getting tickets by doing it himself. So he reached out to someone on Facebook and got scammed for $300. So that's how the week started. So we have zero faith going into the game from the risk family (laughs) in the, because it's already started off rocky and we haven't even got to game day. For some reason though, I do have this weird sense of optimism uh, for the game that I was, I was keeping very, very, close to the chest because it was just making me nervous in general. And you know, you don't, you don't want to start saying your team's going to win, especially uh, against the Baltimore Ravens who are proven to be a normally difficult team, even though they were and one, just like us, but uh, they end up winning the toss. They defer. They end up uh, kick, uh, kicking it off to us. Garner Minshew first play gets fucking hit. Uh, Dude comes around. Um, Colton Miller fumbles. So I'm like, fucking crazy. The first thing that I say after a few drives, um, actually probably about the first quarter and a half, I went to Twitter and I said, the Raiders need to start going lateral instead of horizontal. Luke gets, he's going to give me a goddamn fucking heart attack is what I thought. And then the only thing that I kept thinking midway through the second quarter is goddamn, You forget that the Raiders really wanted to hire Cliff Kingsbury as their offense coordinator until he jumped shipped at the last second and went to Washington. And Luke Getze was our second choice, maybe not even second choice, but he was the second offense coordinator hired in this offense. Off season, and then you think about all the problems he had in Las Vegas, and me as an optimistic Raiders fan, I took to the mate, I took to the the words that were calling from the mountaintop that the Raiders organization believed that Justin Fields was the problem and not Luke Getzey. I believed in that, I trusted that, and then all I see is these lateral fucking screen passes, or the excuse me, these fucking <laughs> horizontal, la- yeah, lateral screen passes, and I need these motherfuckers to start going vertical. This is the motherfucking Las Vegas. Raiders. The fucking Al Davis created this motherfucking team. And what did he want? He wanted the ghost to the post. He wanted motherfuckers going north and south, not east and west. We're already on Jim the west. Plunkett. Yeah, no. Get, get yeah. the fuck down the field. And that is all I was thinking. And MG, you can't see it right now, but after right as the clock starts ticking down to go into the half, you get a shot of AP and Luke Getzey on the sideline. MG, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I tweeted it out so you could check it out on my Twitter. This man gave him, AP gave Luke Getze the Suge Knight stare down 
on the field. And MG, I'm going to try to get this for you so you can see what I'm talking about because it was absolutely marvelous, MG. So you should be able to see oh, there it. Is. There see it, it is. now. Yes. That this was awesome. the moment the game changed. Okay. There was another moment where Garner Minshew threw an interception. Max Crosby like came right into his face and said, no, we got you. I'm going to get the ball back. I had that one on here too, but it's missing. But this right here, MG, this was the fucking moment that the ball game changed for the Las Vegas Raiders. When you get AP getting right up in your face like this, this is where things started to change. And what happened, MG? I'll tell you what happened. Minshew mania took over. This man was 30 for 38, 276 yards, a 94.7 QBR. MG, quick question for you. Do you know what the fuck a QBR means? Um, I know this is a quarterback rating, and but I don't well, but, but why to do, do we care about it? Right? Because I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why we care about the QBR. I I don't use it. Touchdowns, yards, that that's what I I look at those stats mostly. Anyways, Um, Minshew Mania takes over. Thank God he did because we couldn't run the goddamn bar. Our whole team had under thirty yards rushing as a team. MG, we had twenty-seven yards rushing as a team in four quarters of football game. And that's what Gardner Minshew have in negative one rushing yard. This is, it was it was pitiful. Our lead rusher, Zamir White, Zeus from Georgia, supposed to be the replacement for Josh Jacobs, had 24 rushes with uh, nine attempts, 24 yards on the day, I believe. Max Crosby had two sacks, but it was overall great. MG, I'm going to show you another thing on the screen. Um, sure. This is where we get to. I told you I had a feeling in my gut, so I put my money where my mouth was before the game started. I actually saw <laughs> Kay Adams popped up on my Twitter feed, and she said, 100% profit boost if you pick the money line of any team. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? My gut's been telling me all week that I feel like the Raiders could really pull this off. So we're going to go ahead and take that off the end. Yep. Yeah, we're going to hammer that down before the game. 100% profit boost plus 660. I'm going to throw $5 on it because why the fuck not? $38 payout. I picked the Las Vegas Raiders money line. I had a gut feeling and I trusted it. And look at where it got us, MG. It got us to a very special place. So MG, as someone that watched the end of this game, what did you take away? What did you think of Minshew? And why can't my Raiders run the fucking ball? Um, first of all, Mason Crosby's a stud. Um, second best G line from in the state of Michigan. I don't know about that. He actually is pretty damn good. Uh, um, I don't yeah, know. No, we got the I, best offense. We, we got the best defensive front in football. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We got Christian Wilkins. We got Max Crosby. <laughs> we don't even have our full other side of the ball, line okay? because Malcolm Kuntz mm-hmm. tore, tore his MCL uh, before the season <laughs> even kicked off. So we're still missing him. Tyree Wilson, our ninth overall pick from a year ago. Fuck Josh McDaniels once again. Tyree Wilson's <laughs> been out since the first like snap of week one with uh, with a knee injury again. So we're Ladies only... Gentlemen, this is going to be a theme uh fuck G- josh mcdaniels it's gonna come up a lot yeah <laughs> let me tell um, you i thought it, you know i didn't like i said i turned this on after uh my game they shit the bed which they almost mir- miraculously pulled it out by the way but they didn't so i i turned this on and all of a sudden i'm watching i'm texting jonathan as he's having a meltdown as they're trying to stop a um, Lamar Jackson from scoring, and I and I said to you, I goes, this I feel like that's just way too much time to give that guy, and he almost pulled it out. And yeah, I was put, I, I was so thankful that he decided to pitch that ball back. Because mm-hmm. yeah, because I even I if they would have got to the forty five, you know, Justin Tucker's trying to field goal, right? Well, yeah, the thing the thing with that last play is there was no time on the clock after he took off and ran with it. I was mm-hmm. I was just really hoping that uh, Max would get home for his third sack and just put the game away, but they kept doing the incompletions so or short completions and keeping them in the game. But man, it felt and then, and then when Lamar ran it straight up the middle, I'm like, oh no. 
I goes, don't tell me there's a seam all the way to the end zone. Yeah, no, and, that's why I said I was so thankful that he pitched it back because I think that's what that's what really saved it more than anything. Because if they would have if they would have spiked it there, and they could got up to the line, just Tucker comes in and it's at what like the like like the 40, 48 or forty. I think they try it. I think they try like a 60, 68 yard field goal, and he's good enough to maybe get it. So. Uh, mm. So well, yeah, you did squeeze no, that one out. Because Tucker's Tucker's actually been str- and that's another thing. Tucker's been struggling the last two years for outside fifty. Fifty and, and, and I know, further yeah. away. Um so if but anyone he has the leg to do it. If anyone was mm-hmm. listening uh from our uh our fantasy league, I do have uh Justin Tucker and I am listening to trades if anyone wants to trade for uh Justin Tucker. You know, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm, get looking, I'm looking for receivers, points. running backs, basically anyone that could be a flex guy. So if anyone needs a kicker, um, we're in a 20 man league. That's why I added that. <laughs> mm, that's why I added flex players. So it would had more versatility. Um, I did want to mention, I didn't, and cause you and I did the UFL podcast or the U XFL podcast. Right. Um, and when I did the lion stuff, Jake Bates played for the Michigan Panthers. Yeah. Um, and he had three field goals and he in um in preseason he's got another one of those legs where yeah him and, he holds, uh, and the, the, the guy the, from Dallas right yeah Aubrey and uh, Dallas and, yeah it, both in that league and yeah he's doing all right now the big the big knock on him was he couldn't hit the the short ones he was missing extra points and because of the arch and the angle but he's been he's got that under control so far um, yeah and he's he's been solid and. I, if we would have, if we would have had that last, if we would have been only down by one on that last drive, Campbell kicks a Campbell would have, if we would have had to go down and be at like the 40 yard line, we're, we're kicking a field goal. So I don't know for what that's what it is. Anywho, you want to, you want to talk about this Monday night game real quick? Yeah, let's jump into it. So, um, today, later on today, cause this is episode is coming out. Um, you know, Monday, because it's already almost Monday while we're recording it. Um, the Atlanta Falcons are traveling to the Eagles of Philadelphia um, tomorrow night, and the Eagles are the home favorite by five and a half points on most uh, most sports book. MG, how you feeling yes, about this game? Um, I think the Eagles are top four in the NFC as far as where they should be. And right now I'm going to actually put them ahead of my lines, uh, you know, as far as how, how they, they played last week. Um, they, they did now they, given they played in Brazil on a Friday night and I don't wish that on anyone, but they, they looked pretty good actually. Um, I was a little worried without a Cal, uh, Jason Kelsey and in, um, in the middle, but they, that guy held up pretty good. And, yeah, I liked him to cover here. Mm. Okay. And if we're going to do an over-under, I would say I will take the over, actually. And that's over 45 and a half. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go the opposite way on both fronts, and I'll tell okay. you why. If people followed us uh, doing the XFL podcast, we know that um, typical home field has advantage is three and a half to four. <laughs> So I'm really asking myself, does Atlanta keep this into a field goal? And if I, so here's my thing. I wasn't super, I was super impressed with Saquon. I was not super impressed with that offensive line. Could have been the field in Brazil quite possibly. But until then, I need to know who Philly is. I still don't even know who Atlanta is. But because of that, I'm going to. That's my big thing. I have no clue anything about Atlanta. I know they. They they got B. John Robinson. They added some stuff. I actually have the tight end. Uh, what's his name on my fantasy? Um, uh, Pitts. God, what is his name? What? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so so I think I like uh, they're they're one of those teams that are up and coming, and they're gonna they're gonna run the ball a lot, and we'll see. I just don't know, and I think there will be some scoring. That's my I'm. I'm taking a flyer on that. We'll see what happens. See, and that's why I'm taking the under because I think that 
I don't think I don't think that Atlanta necessarily wins. I think they keep it between uh keep it a field goal game. I'm thinking this game goes something like um 13 to 17 or like 10 to 10 to 17, 21 17, somewhere in there. I think Atlanta could cover a field goal, so I think they could cover a five and a half. I would maybe even take them in at, at an alternate three and a half. Um Maybe, maybe we'll see, but I do think it would be under, I would set the points to probably 35, um, is where I think it's comfortably. I just don't think it's going to be a, a high scoring game. I think Philly plays to the level of their opponents. And because of that, I think that will give uh, uh, Atlanta a chance to stay in the game and keep it close and cover the spread. Cool. All right. Before we get to one more thing I have, okay. do you have anything else on this? No. Okay. Before I get to one more thing, I have a question for you and I'm going to answer it too about uh, my team. Okay. In your division. So the, the AFC West, is there one team? And I guess this is kind of that other than the, other than the chiefs, is there one other of those teams that you could see being a difficult challenge? Not a great question to ask me. I know, I know. Because we already, the Raiders started out with the Chargers, who I would say would probably be the person See, that that's says my, so. That's, here's, yeah, that's my one. Here, here's how I look at the division of the AFC West, right? And this is obviously mm-hmm. biased once again. A lot of things that you and I are going to say here are biased when we're speaking about our own team and division, and we understand that. But here, here's what I think. The Chiefs are the top of the mountain, right? I label the Chargers as... I think they will be good. I don't think Harbaugh is going to turn it around perfectly just yet, even though I know they're two and zero. But bear with me. Um, zero faith in the in the Broncos. I think Bo Nix was a reach. I think Sean Payton is out of his goddamn mind for trying to finesse everybody. Like we got finessed um, by by him trying to do this voodoo doll. So Bo Nix would be there for whatever that bullshit is. I think that's overrated. I think the I think at the end of it, the way you're looking at the division is the Chiefs, Raiders, Chargers, uh, Denver at at the last. And the reason I'm putting the Raiders over the Chargers, even though the Raiders already lost to the Chargers in mm-hmm. Week One, is because it wasn't an impressive victory um, by the Chargers. It was an impressive loss by the Raiders, as in the Raiders couldn't do shit offensively. Their defense looked elite week one and week two with struggles on the offense. And I do think um, that once the Raiders get their vibe going with Minshew, AOC or whatever, later in the week when the Chargers do come to Las Vegas, I do think the Raiders will handle business there, breaking that tie. Um, And you get to watch and you get to watch squinty eyed uh, Harbaugh crunched over with that dumb look on his face. I don't have to watch it anymore. Yeah, it didn't (laughs) impress. See, I think the Chargers are going to be good, too. That's the thing is like I'm I'm Mm -hmm. not one of the Harbaugh naysayers. Harbaugh has won everywhere he's gone. I understand that. I just don't think it's going to come around as quickly. I th- I think no. they're two and zero, and it's going to be real nice. But I think that the the Chargers, led by Harbaugh, could be one of those teams that, much like the much like the Cowboys, right? H- had the cow how we used to see the Cowboys start fast. Right. You have all this hope, you think they're going to be great, and then they end up floundering. Then they as we get to the yep, yeah, and that's Fair where enough. I think the Chargers the Chargers fit um, with the hype. With the talent around them, with the coaching, there's no there's no talent on the offensive side of the Chargers. Yes, you got Herbert, right? You got a great quarterback. I like J.K. Dobbins. I like him more than Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards. I like J.K. Dobbins. Gus Edwards has a one-two punch though. But outside of that, their defense that they're they're much like the Raiders. I think the Raiders have mm-hmm. more pieces on offense than the Chargers do, which is why I put the Raiders ahead of the Chargers there. I think the Raiders defense is elite. I think the defense of the Raiders is better than the Chiefs defense. And I think if the Raiders could get somewhat consistent play, I think the Raiders could consistently beat the Chiefs in the division as well. But they need that they need quarterback play that's consistent to keep up with Mahomes doesn't have to be better than Mahomes has to be consistent to keep up with Mahomes. That's a good, that's a very good word. I like that. Yeah. Do you want to know who mine, uh, mine is for my division? Yeah. The, Cause I the, feel like you're be North. a little bit more excited than mine is. <laughs> well, mine, believe it or not, after the first two weeks, now it's Minnesota. 
I'm like, I don't know what they're doing. They're another team they're I'm doing. not buying in on. Mm-hmm. I'm not buying in on them yet. Um, and the, the thing is, is I watched uh, uh, Justin Jefferson um, just torch us and with a with a guy that probably should be working at Burger King. Um, it Sam was Donald's a, a nice gentleman. You take that back. No, no, no. Last year it was Mullins, I believe, oh, was the quarterback, and he Mullins, just yeah, it, Dobbs. They had like yeah. three quarterbacks last year. Yeah, they had a ton of them, and it, one of them, yeah, both of them, both times he played him, he Justin Jefferson just lit us up. If that guy can get hot and they can get him the ball, they can be in there with anybody. Um, I don't know if this is real or not what they did in the first two weeks, but right now I'm going. Oh, they're a threat now. Depending on what happens with um. Uh, Jordan Love, if he comes back, uh, but Malik Willis did look pretty good today. Uh, so, mm, mm. yeah, I don't think that's gonna last either. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm I'm not impressed with Josh Jacobs, and that's a hater of me uh, on the Packers. I'm just not. But um, let's get into this last segment. Let's get the fuck up out of here, MG. Just one more thing. Talk to me. Just one more thing. Okay. I don't know how you feel about this, and I know you will on one of these because one of these has got to annoy the absolute shit out of you. But I am absolutely annoyed, tired, and and just sick of all these celebrity girlfriend and wives having opinions about the games, about the fans. And here in Detroit, one in particular, a lady by the name of Kelly Stafford got pretty famous going on these podcasts and after she left, given she was here for 12 years and raised a family here, and she was whining off season about how she was treated uh, at the playoff game last year, saying that the, the fans were yelling at her, booing her kids. No, Kelly, they were booing you because you're annoying. You come here all the time and you talk to us. Um, and when season when you were here, you were complaining about how Matthew was being treated and it got old, you know, and. And so that's why people don't like her. And I'm also not, I'm not a fan of your girl, Taylor Swift being uh, shown every other play. Jonathan, they put her in the, uh, I'm, I'm being very facetious when I say that, by the way, Uh, I, I got to tell you, I was absolutely um, just annoyed that that opening uh, video package they did for week one, she was in it. There was a 30 second clip and she was in it six times. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes wasn't in it that much. There was, and I'm like, I get it. You're trying to, you're trying to draw new fans, but that would have been last year. I don't know. I, it just annoys me. It's like, I don't need to see them anymore. That's all I'm saying. I think a lot of ladies will understand that. Mm. And oh, by the way, Chris Godwin just sort of caught another ball. <laughs> well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. That will be all the time we have today. Uh, we got to get the fuck up out of here. It is midnight, and the Thursday night game just ended. So enjoy the Thursday Sunday night. Yeah. You don't know what day it is. I don't know what day it is. The <laughs> Sunday night game just ended. The Monday night game is started tonight whenever you're fucking watching this. We will be back Friday to give you our picks for week three, and then we will be back here next Monday to break it all down after that. So that's MG. I'm Jonathan Risk. You can follow us everywhere. Um, I really got to go to the bathroom or else I'd say some more. So we'll see y'all. Peace.